Hello friends, you are welcome to my YouTube channel, Civil Engineering. Today, I am going to talk about, the path of the transferring of load, in a building, or a frame structure. Let's see, how loads flow through a building. Multiple elements are used to, transmit, and resist, external loads within a building. These elements, define the mechanism of load transfer in a building, known as the load path. The load path extends from the roof, through each structural element to the foundation. An understanding of the critical importance, of a complete load path, is essential for everyone involved in building design and construction. The load path can be identified, by considering the elements in the building, that contribute to resisting the load, and by observing how they transmit the load, to the next element. Depending on the type of load, to be transferred, there are two basic load paths. The two load paths are Gravity load path and Lateral load path Both the gravity and lateral load paths, utilize a combination of horizontal, and vertical structural components, as explained below. Number 1, Gravity Load Path Gravity load is, the vertical load acting on a building structure, including dead load, and lave load due to occupancy, or snow. Gravity load on the floor, and roof slabs, is transferred to the columns or walls, down to the foundations, and then, to the supporting soil beneath. This figure shows, an isometric view of a concrete structure, and a gravity load path. The vertical gravity load, acts on a slab, which transfers the load to the beams, which in turn transfer the load, to the columns, and then down to the foundations. The gravity load path, depends on the type of floor slab, that is whether, a slab is a one-way, or a two-way system. In the one-way system, the effect of external loads is transferred, primarily in one direction. The slab beam, and girder floor, is an example of a one-way system. The gravity load, acting on this system is, transferred from the slab to the beams, and then to the girders. Finally, the girders, transfer the load to the columns. The load path in a two-way system is not as clearly defined. The slab transfers gravity load in two perpendicular directions, however, the amount carried in each direction depends on the ratio of span lengths in the two directions, the type of end supports, and other factors. For example, in the slab with beam system shown in figure, the load is transferred from the slab to the beams aligned in the two directions, and then to the columns. That's all about the gravity load path, and then the type 2, lateral load path. The lateral load path is the way, lateral loads which are mainly due to wind, and earthquakes are transferred through a building. The primary elements of a lateral load path are as follows. Vertical components, which are in the path are, shear walls and frames. And then, the horizontal components in the path are, roof floors, and foundations. The figure on the screen, shows a reinforced concrete structure, and the elements constituting the lateral load path. The roof and floor systems transfer the load to the walls, which in turn transfer the load to the foundations in the final phase. Roof and floor systems which is also called diaphragms, take horizontal forces from the stories, at or above their level and transfer them to walls or frames, in the story immediately below. Shear walls and frames are the primary lateral load resisting elements, however, these members also carry gravity loads. Shear walls receive lateral forces from diaphragms and transmit them to the foundations. Foundations form the final link in the load path by collecting the lateral forces from all stories and transmitting them to the ground. Thank you for watching the video, and be with us for more videos. Thank you.